challenges we face are real. They are serious and they are many. The temperature is expected to keep going up. The stock market plunged. Douglas County will run out of drinking water. They will not be met easily or in a short span of time. A sixth grader came down with suspected swine flu on Wednesday. Energy, climate, food, population, economic pressures. Any one of these challenges might be very serious. And Raising sea Catastrophic weather. Ten-year drought. It's scary. These are things that are happening today. The time for action is now. The world had never known such uncertainty. We were used to having what we wanted and doing what we wanted. And week after week, they're withdrawing money, and they're enjoying a good life. If they would bother to read the statements, they would see that the bank account is dropping $900, $800, $700, $600. $600. And at that rate, you know that in another six months of the good life, there's not going to be a good life anymore. We've acted as though we were independent of the environment. We burned fossil fuels in the belief that we could do that forever. People are complaining about the economic crisis we have right now, uh, where we basically turn living stuff into dead stuff and call that economic growth. People everywhere were working furiously on solutions. Our government was pouring money into alternative energy. It seemed like everyone was growing their own vegetable garden. Windmills were sprouting up all over. People were beginning to understand. But the clock was running out, and nature was always one step ahead. Flowers are blooming earlier, and birds are coming back from migration much earlier. If you were to pull back from the Earth, what you would see is species are moving their ranges farther north to get to cool. From we could see a doubling or tripling of inflation. We're running out of oil. The large spread out suburbs that we've grown accustomed to, the strip malls, the big box stores with their enormous parking lots. And as energy becomes much more expensive, you'll see the protesters demanded an end to rising food prices. Our agriculture system is almost wholly dependent on cheap oil. Tremendous amounts of diesel fuel that are used. By 2015 in the United States, add about 20 million people to the population and then just play out what that does to consumption patterns. I mean, the, the number of people that we've got to feed. As the American way of life becomes increasingly unsustainable, the rest of the world will be trying to catch up. Actually, they're moving into meat-based diets. Finally this evening, saving our seas. The federal government has released a major assessment on the oceans. The news is not good. Increased heat speeds up evaporation cycles. The impact of these changes can be scientists report from the Arctic. The tundra is thawing faster than expected. By 2030, 80% of those glaciers may be gone. If the glaciers disappear, much of the food supply will disappear as well. These glaciers provide during the dry months that you can use to irrigate your crops. When those glaciers are gone, you've got a massive drought situation. In 2030, Africa could be facing extreme and widespread drought. Rainfall levels are going to continue to drop over time in Africa. And in the U.S., in 2030, many of the massive reservoirs fed by the Colorado River will be drying up. Three days after Tucson's taps ran dry, it's residents finally got relief when a convoy of National Guard tanker trucks carrying one million gallons of water finally arrived. Anxious residents lined up to get their allotment. Hundreds of thousands of environmental refugees fleeing drought and famine are streaming toward Europe. From Laredo to Tijuana, millions of Latin Americans are massing along the U.S. border. You'll see intense pressure for people to move and, uh, into the United States, and that'll put huge stress, I think, on, on the systems of the United States. I can't imagine the horrors that will take place. Thousands of refugees had been arriving at the border. Someone had blown a hole through the wall. There were people falling, panic everywhere. Over the years, our favorites started to disappear. 
probably a third of all species will be on an inexorable path to extinction by 2050. They will include familiar species like lions and tigers and bears. In the history of the Earth, there have been five mass extinctions in which at least half the species on Earth disappeared. They were caused by natural disasters, massive volcanic eruptions, rapid climate change, meteors hitting the Earth. Today, in the 21st century, we are in the midst of what scientists are calling the sixth extinction. And for the first time, it is being caused by a single species, us. When one species proliferates beyond any other, ultimately, it sort of knocks out its own life support systems. The idea that we could do so much damage to our natural environment that it could cause our global civilization to collapse may seem far-fetched abrupt meaning within the time scale of a decade or sometimes even less than a decade we knew there were certain things that could rapidly turn up the heat but we didn't know what that tipping point would be until it happened an enormous reservoir of methane produced by decomposing plants and animals lies buried beneath the frozen arctic tundra this is what specialists call a non-linear flip or a non-linear change when that happens global temperatures are wreaking havoc with the Greenland ice sheet. Some fear that the colossal sheet is on the verge of collapse. Less drastic measures are taken, low-lying coastal cities around the world could expect to see disastrous flooding. Honey. Citizens are demanding their governments respond to the impending temperature. Pentagon today held closed-door meetings to discuss climate change. Our top story tonight the president is announcing the Cosmic Shield project, which aims to halt the disintegration of the Greenland ice sheet. It didn't take long for the world to agree. A technology existed that could stop the ice sheets from melting. It should be used. Hundreds of jets from all around the world were spraying a mist of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. Gas would form particles which would shade the Earth and temporarily cool it. For a year, there were these spectacular sunsets. What are the other consequences of those things? Maybe it would cause some other environmental problem that we don't foresee today. The Earth cooled, but that was the least of it. Tonight in Washington, there's debate on whether to follow China and Great Britain and cease flying Cosmic Shield missions. The Surgeon General testified before Congress today on the health effects of further depletion. The cloud was burning off the ozone layer. Once that was gone, Every living creature would be exposed to a massive dose of radiation. Society is not set up to deal with A vicious nor'easter is headed up the east coast and is expected to hit New York on the high tide this afternoon. In truly catastrophic flooding. Holland and Lincoln tunnels are filling with seawater. We've got a problem. And the subway is full of seawater and it is shut down. There's an evacuation order in effect. Authorities are now telling anyone still in the city to remain calm and stay inside. Take hundreds of thousands of years to get it back, to restore it. We have a chance to get it right, to move from a disconnect to a sustainable planet. The problem we face today is how do we get from here to there? So what should we do right now to chart another course? Many experts say the first step should be transforming how we use energy. Much of what we need to do, we already know. But individuals alone won't be able to turn things around. Governments and industries are going to have to change on a massive scale. We're going to have to come up with more solar, more wave power, more geothermal energy. Beyond the familiar technologies, amazing new ones are already in the works. Fields of solar balloons that could power thousands of homes a day. A nuclear fusion facility that could produce the energy of a tiny man-made star. Getting enough of these projects up and running will take people, and that means jobs. But completely redesigning our energy system would require rapid change. It would mean both sacrifice and hard work for the whole country. But we have done it before. The thing I would compare it to is World War II, after Pearl Harbor. And we won that war. It's going to take that same level of commitment. What effect does that have on China, on India, on other nations? more stable, sustainable, prosperous economies. 
As we move forward in the century, we will see the investments and hard choices we made early on begin to pay off. We're growing more food with less water. We've restored ecosystems. By the middle of the century, we would be using water and other resources much more carefully. Farmers would be planting drought-resistant crops. Water would be recycled. The hope is that once we figure out how to solve these problems, we'll be in a much better position to help the rest of the world. We actually make global stability possible. We're going to have to have joint management of water resources, of energy resources. We're going to be living on a planet where we don't see things at a national level, but we see things at a global level. The challenge of building a global green economy where we're sharing technologies, not fighting wars over water and oil. Humanity will be relatively disease-free. Children will be treated as rare treasures. We will be able to create a world that will have a livable planet for our kids and their kids. Kids born today will see us navigate past the first greatest test of humanity, which is can we actually be smart enough to live on a planet without destroying it?